Hi, this is Misha. We have shown you some interesting SKSs and have another one here. It might not seem too inspired at the beginning, but it has a few unique features and is definitely worth a look, I believe. I couldn't really find a video on YouTube about this exact variant either. This is the Navy Arms. It has two general names it goes by. In their literature, they called it the Assault Carbine. And collectors, for whatever reason, I, I looked and I couldn't find a real reason, but it's kind of uh, colloquially known as the Type 84. This is a magazine-fed... That is definitely more than the toker have. open. Held open. SKS, as you see. It fires 762-39, as most SKSs do. It's Chinese production, very standard back here. We have a 16-inch paratrooper barrel has the standard length gas system. We have a shortened spiker bayonet. This one is fixed. There were some that were quick detaching, not of this model, but other ones we'll talk about in a minute. As I said, it does feed from detachable mags. We have a mag release here. It's kind of interesting how they did this. It is more of an AK paddle style, but it's hinged where it uses more or less the original style release for the fixed mag by pushing it back here. It takes modified AK mags. This is a little, I thought it was a 10 rounder, but it actually might be a five because of how follower it doesn't go down. I'll try putting some cartridges in it later. Got a little short mag. This, interestingly, has the side sling mount instead of the bottom, which I think for a paratrooper is a good idea. I've also got one of the slightly shorter slings on it. And unique to the Navy Arms Assault Carbine Type 84, we have a bolt hold open pin right here in the bolt handle. This is kind of like on an M1 carbine. Now this one's a little hinky, there we go. You move it back here, and you press it in, and in theory it stays, and it stays pretty good. I'm gonna have my gunsmith tinker with it. This, you know, obviously isn't a new gun, and I think it might be worn down a little bit. The spring might not be as strong as it once was, so I may replace the spring and build the pin up a little bit, because sometimes it likes to slam forward which is startling. But this was the only detachable mag SKS to come from the factory with that little bolt hold open feature. It's also the only one in the pre-ban era to come in taking AK mags with the 16 inch barrel and the spike bayonet. Other guns had some, for example, the so-called type, excuse me, the so-called SKSD had a 20-inch barrel and fed from AK mags, and it had one of the quick detaching bayonets. But then the ban happened. In 1989, the Bush administration, by executive order, did a modification. Hang on, guys. Sometimes you got to get these seated just right. And now it's going to be a jerk on camera. That's actually why the detach the uh, hold open. There we go. Got to push it up a little heavier. 
sorry, in 1989, the Bush administration passed the so-called assault weapons ban for imports, which basically banned AKs, FALs, and it tried to ban by features, and SKS is like this because they have so many evil features got caught up in that. The problem was Navy Arms only started to import these in February of 1989, and the ban came through just a short time later and went into effect in June. So they really only brought one batch of these in. Prior to this, the only other import for detachable mags was the so-called SKSD, as I mentioned, and the, again, the pre-ban era. These are interesting guns. Both the D and the Assault Carbine here were factory-built guns. What they did, they took standard SKSs over in China. They cut the barrels down. And they used a slightly different style of receiver for the mag. And on this one here, of course, they installed a bolt with the pin. Interestingly, these mags actually work as kind of a last round hold open Yugo style. The 30 rounders do. And you can pin it back here. So, kind of a neat setup. So since these were coming in right as the band was going through, not many made it. Common lore says that 4 to 500 came in in 1989. However, the gentleman that I acquired this from was an FFL back in the 80s, and he purchased it new from Navy Arms or maybe one of their distributors. And he said that the advertisement that he read about this said only 800 came in. And I was really hoping he had the ad still. He did not. Second, I was hoping he could remember if it was a shotgun news or some other. And he couldn't remember. If, if, he ever, if it ever comes to his mind what it was, I will definitely let the internet know so people can try to track down a photocopy. But according to the ad, he said 800 came in. Either way, it's a very small number, under 1,000, 400 to 800 by Navy Arms, the Type 84 assault carbine. A neat little critter. The ad also claimed that these were used in, I believe, Laos and Cambodia. This is, this is BS. These were done for the American market, but they were done in China. Now, some people claim the whole detaching mag variation reconfiguration was first designed in the U.S. This could be. Who knows? The Chinese might have copied it, or they might have come up with it on their own. Another interesting feature of this gun, most of your other detaching mag guns took unmodified mags. These, however, have a small modification to them. They have the front part, I'll bring this one both out here, inleted down, a little semicircle as you see. This was so the magazine could sit up higher, and this would act essentially as your feed ramp straight into the chamber. It's an easy modification that you can do to any standard AK mag. And it supposedly makes these more reliable. I know people owning D's and later versions said that the reliability, some guns work great, some guns don't. And that was something done to hopefully get a little better feed angle for better reliability. And it does, it looks like it would actually direct it in there quite nicely. It does have a stripper clip guide. I'm going to see if that actually works. I suspect it doesn't. I suspect the guide is just there from the original design. But it might work. It, it does line up with the back of the mag. So it might work. Well, I'll try it. I just wanted to share this with you since it is unusual. Pretty neat. The, uh, let, me let the bolt go forward on the guys. Good trigger on this, to standard safety. Pretty well standard Chinese SKS, otherwise wood furniture as you see. Interestingly, this came with five 30 round mags and the short mag. All six mags are serialized to the gun. So these came in 
really is the last of the pre-bends along with some of the final D's. In the post ban era, beginning in 1990, we saw more magazine-fed SKSs coming over from China, but much like the AKs that had to be turned into the Mac 90, these post ban versions had to be modified as well. The most common and famous is the SKS-M, which had typically a 16-inch barrel, but rarely a 20. And it could have either the standard length gas system, or sometimes later on, a slightly shorter one. I think it's about an inch shorter. It would feed from detachable magazines, and typically came with a thumbhole stock. There are some that have more of a Monte Carlo type stock, though. So that's the most common in the post ban era. It would not have a bayonet lug, though, or bayonet at all, because of the, the features being banned. There were some others like the, the M5D or the MC5D, very similar to that. There's also one people refer to as the SKS-S, the SKS-NR. China was pretty inconsistent how they marked their guns. In fact, the Ds had no special markings, really. That's just the name that was given to them. And then in the post ban era, there were, there were multiple names. But these were all just uh, AK magazine-fed SKSs. And... Most of the post band ones would have the 16-inch barrel, but none of them would come from the factory with the bayonet because of what was going on at the time. And of course, large numbers of these came over between 90 and 94. Comparatively, few came over in the 80s. I think most of the Ds were 88 and getting into 89 dated. I think there might have been some 87s. And again, all of these came over in early 89, so they probably were made in 88. But yeah, since we have quite a few videos on AKs, including Chinese and SKSs, just thought I would share this one with you. I bought it from its original owner, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Well, if you have any questions or comments, want to share your own, that'd be great. I know a lot of you have M's and D's out there. I really like it. I think it's neat. I do kind of wish it had the quick detaching bayonet. I think that would be just one extra little neat feature. The reason I was attracted to this version is you do get a lot of the, the neat features and short barrel and all that and AK mags. and It does have a really interesting look to it. Almost like a Type 63. If it used a rotating bolt, it would be pretty close to a Type 63. I, I don't know why China never sent over a semi-auto Type 63. I know in the military service they weren't very popular, but they sent so many other things over. I, I think having a semi-Type 63 would have been interesting because I find that design very intriguing because it is very Chinese. I know it's basically an AK and an SKS that had a baby, but I still think the way they did it was very uniquely Chinese and, and worth knowing about. Well, since those aren't available, this to me is kind of the closest we ever were able to get in America to a semi-Type 63. Well, if you enjoyed this, please click like. And if you'd like to share your own guns or have any questions, please comment below. And if you'd like to help support us, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha. And we'll catch you next time.